going on to all my Euphoria fans out there, and happy Euphoria Sunday. Elliot back again, here from Movie Files, breaking down the latest episode of Season 2, Episode 4, which was titled, You Who Cannot See, Think of Those Who Can. This is the midway point of the season, and this was the longest episode of the season so far, and woo, we got so much to cover. I mean, Cassie has never been messier. We got Nate and Maddie continuing to be toxic. We got the stuff going on with Cal and him speaking his truth. Rue going to church, and Jules and Elliot, and everything in between. I mean, there's so much to cover. I'm so excited to be here with you all in this spoiler review. But before we get into it, make sure you're checking me out on all my other social media accounts. If you all are new to the channel, we are on the quest to 20,000 subscribers. So if you're not already, make sure you're subscribing and hitting that notification bell. And as you all can see on the screen now, if you enjoy this review, if you love this show like I do, give this video a thumbs up. It means a lot, but also share the video to everyone you know that loves the show just as much as we do. And last but not least, go ahead and let the comments light them up. Light up the comments with your pros, your cons. So much to go over. I mean, I want to know your thoughts about Rue and her spiritual moment, Jules and Elliot, Maddie and Cassie, the birthday party mishaps, and of course, Nate, Cal speaking his truth in front of his whole entire family, the stuff that we're going to talk about Cat. There were some rumors about Cat that I heard about that we're going to talk about, but I want to know all your thoughts in the comments below. So we got a lot to cover, but I just want to let you all know if this is your first time tuning in, we also have a live show every single Sunday after the episode at 9.15 p.m. Central Time, so probably right around the time this video is over, click the link in the description, head over to the live stream. I always like to bring on some guests. We got some two guests that I'm so excited to talk about this episode with, so if you love the show, you love the discussions, click the link in the description, join the live chat, and let's talk about this episode. But let's get into my thoughts, my full spoiler breakdown of the episode. I want to start off with something that I heard about last week. We're talking about in a live stream, Kat. I mentioned to you all in my you know episode one review, she's one of my favorite characters. I was really excited excited to explore more about her story arc, especially from what we got last year. And as it be, I heard recently that there is some some beef going on with uh, Barbie Ferreira, who is the actress that plays Kat and the, the writer, director, editor, producer, creator of the show, Sam Levinson. They were butting heads in the, the shooting of this season. There were some rumors about she just wasn't happy about where the, the character was going. She walked off set, and I guess in some type of ego way, Sam kind of took that personal and cut a lot of her scenes. I don't know if the rumor is true, but based on these four episodes so far, it kind of looks like it. We're going to talk about what we got with Kat in this episode, but let me know again if you all are familiar with this rumor. Do you think the rumor is true? And personally, not to pick sides, but if I were a director... I wouldn't let my ego get in the way, and you know, of course, they're gonna butt heads. This is a very, you know, serious show with a lot of serious topics. So if I was Sam, I would have loved to have used some of that energy and put it into the character. But who knows if it's to be true? I just know right now we haven't gotten much of Cat, so it sounded like it's true. But I just want to kind of put that out there, as well as as you all may know, Chris McKay. He has not been seen since episode one. I know there was rumors that there was some beef between him and Sam. So. I hope these rumors aren't true because I love this show. I love this cast and I and I hope, you know, they can figure some things out. But I think McKay, he's pretty much off the table, which for his case, it makes sense because he's in college and he really doesn't have ties to anyone in high school anymore with him breaking up with Cassie. But I just want to kind of talk about that up top. Let me know what you all think about Kat. And if you feel like she's getting the short end of the stick so far this season, let's talk about it in the comments. But let's get into the actual meat and potatoes here as we talk about what's going on with Cassie and Nate and all this stuff but we open up with Rue who is having this moment explained to us why she's in love with Jules and this is a pretty artistic kind of cool motifs that we get here as we're seeing different movies that I'm a fan of in regards to their love we get Jules looking like Frida we have a moment from Ghost we got Titanic we got Snow White and Brokeback Mountain as we see Jules or to say Rue telling us that that this is her first time getting oral sex and you can just tell in the moment and, and we've been talking about this you know since episode one we talked about some live stream Rue doesn't get pleasure out of sexual intercourse and sexual encounters she gets her pleasure from her drugs as she this was funny as hell as she's pretending to orgasm and, and Rue can tell she can tell that she is faking his orgasm as we see her having this conversation with Elliot and it's just within these last two weeks call me right call me wrong 
But the chemistry between Elliot and Jules so far has just been just as strong as Rue and Jules of what we've gotten so far this season. And some might say might even more chemistry than season one. But they're having this kind of d discussion here. And he goes ahead and gives her a little bit of tips in regards to how to properly, you know, pleasure your loved one in oral sex. And, you know, they're having their moment. He's showing her. She's showing him what he learned. And, uh... Oh yeah, Rue is on her way. So they have to, and by the way, after they're, you know, he's showing her how to do what she needs, you know, what she wants to learn. They make out, they kiss, they have their moment, but it's cut short because Rue is on her way. And uh, we're going to talk more about that love triangle and just the messiness. Again, Elliot, I like the character a lot. I mean, his name, you know, his name is pretty cool. It's a great name, <laughs> but neither, you know, I like the character, but I, something tells me we can't trust him. As Jules couldn't trust him, and she was right, but uh, I think she's head over heels for Elliot at this point. But let's go to Cassie and Nate, who we get a lot of them in this episode. We see them talking about their past hookups. We get this moment with Cass, you know, having in her head of what they've been doing this whole season. We intercut that with the celebration of Maddie's birthday. Cass is giving her the cake. We see Cassie gives her a photo book with their memories because they're best friends. I'm like, oh, that's so sweet. But you, you, how sweet is that? Because you're, you're betraying your best friend. All of this is happening. We see that Nate and Maddie, we cut to them as we go back to their conversation from what happened last week when he gifted her the flowers. Love this moment here as Maddie is talking to Cass and we see Lexi. You got to keep an eye out for Lexi this season because she's writing that play. And I think the moment that Maddie will find out about Cassie and Nate is during that play. I think there's going to be a scene in that play and I think Maddie's going to put the pieces together and who knows if it's going to get physical or we know that tape is out there. She still has possession of that tape and Nate has not gotten the tape from her yet, which I think was kind of the intentions of him trying to get back in good will with Maddie. I think that's going to be a moment whenever it comes. I'm, I'm thinking the play right now because I haven't seen the trailer for episode uh, five. I think the 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 play is going to be the season finale uh, of this season. But we'll see what comes of all that. But we cut to Maddie axing Nate. So we're cutting between you know Cassie hearing that Maddie saying I love you, and then we cut to Maddie axing Nate about him loving her and if she, if he really even felt like he loved her. And he says no, and then they hug each other and kiss each other. I'm like, oh, just Maddie, stop it, just. Where's Theo? Where's the Theo? Can you talk her out of it? Where's the mom of the house? Can you can you? Because that was a plot I was thinking was gonna go there with Maddie and the and the mother of Theo. But I'm like, can someone help her right now? Because Nate is just a, a parasite attaching himself to these women that are very vulnerable at this point. But that leads into this argument between Nate and Cassie, and we get into the conversation about her not considering herself a good person. She said that a couple times this season. I think at the time she was with McKay in episode one, and now she's bringing it up again and I love Cassie, but yeah, you're not looking like the best person right now, if I'm being honest, but they get into a back and forth, and I love how Nate, Mr. Moral Compass, is like, oh, you're sleeping with your best friend's, you know, boyfriend, like, Nate, you have the, the nerve to talk about people doing good and bad things, but it's within this conversation. Nate gives her the choice. Hey, you can either, look, you're, you're hot-headed right now, I don't got time for this, you can either leave or get in the bed, and that was the moment where Cassie, she finally kind of stuck up for herself, but... Woo, Cassie and, 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 and blackmailing and crazy. Let's get into this moment here as she is just kind of going, you know, they're very toxic. She mentions that you and Maddie don't need to be with each other. You're toxic. And I'm going to do everything that I can to make sure that you all are not together. This, <laughs> this moment right here, you talk about, this brings me back to high school, right? These petty arguments that you get in with, with your uh, particular partner who you're dating at that time, just young, dumb love. He mistakenly, or maybe he does it on purpose. Because we know Nate likes to do things on purpose. He calls her Maddie mistakenly. And this is where, you know, Cass is like, oh, see, see what I mean right now? As they're going back and forth he's calling her this she's calling him that and then she tells him you know I ain't got nothing to lose Nate I am you know on the edge right now and if you think Maddie's crazier and look at those eyes when she says I'm even crazier I believed her and you talk about crazy and this is no disrespect to all the beautiful women out there but as a male that has had relationships and when a woman says this to you or wherever the case may be man woman Whenever your loved one, your partner says this to you, y you better be scared. So as, you know, Nate is screaming, you're crazy, you're crazy. She says, okay, Nate. And this is, this is what scares me. This is one of the scariest things you could ever say to someone. Okay, 
by. That is the most scariest thing you could tell someone in the middle of an argument as he's like, I love you. She goes ahead and walks away. Cassie is killing it. Sydney Sweeney is killing it this so far this season. I don't like Nate, but Jacob Alorhe, he's doing great. That scene was very, very, very toxic, very argumentative. And again, for someone that has been in love, in love, young, dumb love, I've been in those moments, right? And just to Okay, bye. Uh, that 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 hit hard. That that hit me and it reminded me of some arguments I've been in in the past. But she's blackmailing him and, and all. I mean, that scene was just great. Let me know what you all thought about that. But let's cut back to Lexi, who don't get a lot of her in this episode. She's in the the background. She's writing her play. We're speaking of the play. We see this reality versus the play. This really short scene, but a very interesting art. I love, again, the way Sam kind of cuts reality, being in our character's head. She's, you know, auditioning someone for the play, the different actresses who's going to play her sister, Holly, a.k.a. Cassie. Intercut that with her, Cassie, feeling judgmental by her sister. And then again, we're seeing that being played out in the play. I, again, small scene, but I, I love the intercut and just the turmoil between those two sisters because if we're being honest I love Lexi but I feel like Lexi should be a better sister for Cass to get her just pull her by her head and say wake up Cassie get out of the situation but she's she's doing her own thing this season she's writing a play and by the way is it me or I, I miss Lexi and uh Fez we haven't gotten them in a couple episodes but hey if we can get more of Lexi just being her own independent woman even though I want to see her with Fez because that's my boy who's been kind of in the background as well I'm okay with it but again that play I'm thinking that play is going to be the season finale based on everything so far but Let's talk about the parents, the parents of the show, parents of the year, starting off with Susie Howard, and I'm talking about Cal Jacobs, the influences on their kids, as we see Susie allowing the girls to drink at Maddie's birthday, cut that with Cal, who's drinking, he, he's speaking of cut, he's cutting loose right now, he's drinking, he got that, you know, we know what uh, my boy Ashtray did to him last week with that shotgun, so I think that may have a little bit of influence on his mind right now, because he was just wilding out in this episode in a good way. We'll talk about Cal in a little bit, but we see Cal is drunk off his ass. He's talking to Nate at this point, calling him winner of all winners, big Mr. Big Balls, and this, that, and the third, and, and listen, I've never seen Cal act like this ever in this show, and I'm not a Cal fan, but I'm going to tell you all right now. I was liking what we got with Cal in this episode, more in particularly his moment of truth, which we'll talk about, but man, he was drunk off his ass, and he was he was doing this thing, I'm not gonna lie, but <laughs> cutting back to, and, and you all know how I felt about uh, Cal's flashback last week, and, and we'll get into that when we get to his moment of truth, but let's get to this love triangle, this other love triangle of this season, which is Rue, Elliot, and Jules, as, you know, they have no shame in their game. Rue goes to the bathroom. We know she's doing drugs. While she's in the bathroom, we see Jules and Elliot making out and hearing her. Like, I'm like, this is just, this is a mess. This is a hot ass mess. Elliot is just a, a devil for these two characters. A bad influence, the truth of their games, and, and all the toxicity and all this, the sneakiness and the lies. This is a very interesting character so far. We haven't gotten as much from, like, who is Elliot? That's my big question, you know, again great name, but who is he? Where his family? Why does he randomly come into the school? I want to get that Elliot episode. I hope that's next week. We'll see. But again, we have, you know, at this point, we know Elliot and, and Ruth's connection is all about drugs. So he goes to the bathroom. He doesn't do the drugs. Now, my question for you all is, is it him trying to just clean up? Is it him trying to sober up in front of Jules? Is it him really liking Jules, knowing that Jules does not want to be with an addict? Let me know your thoughts on that. I think it's a combination of all three, but let me know your thoughts on him, like not doing, going through with the whole game that him and Rue are playing with the whole who can do the most drugs, are we drug partners, this, that, and the other. Let me know what you all think about that. But let's go on again. This weird relationship between these three as we see another game of truth and dare. And this is why I'm like, Ellie is so manipulative in my in my opinion. When he's like, let's try to make Jules jealous. Knowing that he kissed Jules early in the episode, kissed her moments ago. And he's kissing Rue now in front of Jules to make her jealous. Which we see that Jules say, oh, I'm not jealous. Which we know she was jealous when they first met in episode two. But we see, she's like, oh, let's, okay, let's, you want to be, you know, Miss Jealousy over here, Rue. Hey, I dare you, Ellie to come lick my stomach, which he does. I'm just like, what's going on? I know Rue probably isn't able to put two and two together, that they are definitely a thing right now because she's high off her ass, but 
What's going on with Jules? Let's let's take a moment, pause this conversation, the episode. How are you all feeling about Jules so far this season? I I, I love Hunter, the actress that plays Jules. I, I think season one gave me more of who she is. Her special definitely gave me that. I don't know what to think of her this season. I don't know what the end game is so far with Jules because her whole thing was obviously her relationship with Nate, her relationship with Tyler, which I don't know, which I hope we get more of that resolution because we really haven't gotten much of that at all. They haven't even spoken this season. But then this season, I don't know what to make of where they're taking her so far. Again, I, I love the actress and, and I'm a fan of the character, but so far she seems between, she's stuck between a rock and a hard place. She's just, it's just the Rue and Elliot thing. I'm just wondering what's going on with Jules mentally. What's going on with the inside of Jules? Let me know if I'm just, if you guys feel the same way about the character and, and a couple other characters that feel like they're just kind of menandering through this season. Let's talk about that for a second, but let's get back into this conversation here. And as again, this relationship, it's a relationship that's going to inevitably crash and burn, which I thought, my head always goes to a dark spot. I thought, I'm kind of jumping ahead, when Cal was on the road driving, drinking and driving, I thought they were going to get into a car accident. That's the second time this so far this season. Like I thought in episode one, when Nate and uh, Cassie were in the car, I thought they were going to get in a car, car accident. And now I'm thinking the same thing with Cal, but that didn't happen. But we'll, we'll get to this road uh, uh, driving uh, with the characters. But again, the relationship between those three will inevitably crash and burn. But like I said last week about Elliot, I just don't feel like the, the kids are good influence on them. Uh, and, and again, who is he? What are his intentions? It's very interesting. But let's get into this discussion. We talked about it up top in regards to Kat and her limited role in this season so far. We see that she's at the party and she tells Maddie that she's she hates Ethan and he looks good on paper, but it's not what she wants right now. And they get into the conversation about how you should feel and she should just do of what she wants and this, that, and the other. I like the moment because, it, it, again, it shows, you know, Maddie and, um, you know, Kat still have their relationship, their friendship, which at points seems to be, like, not real, and sometimes it does. But I like that moment between the two. But, again, we talked about it up top. I hope next week she either breaks things off with Ethan or just tells him the truth. Because, honestly, I said it last week. I think Ethan and Lexi might be a thing with him being more involved in the play. And I don't know who he's going to play in the play. Is he going to play himself? Is he going to play Nate? Uh, is he going to play another character? But I think that's something that I think the show might go towards more so than Alexi. And who knows? we got another love triangle, Lexi, uh, Fez, and Ethan. But I really hope that she just makes a decision next week. And, again, not just giving her just that thing. I want to explore more of Kat, and if the rumors are to be true, it would make sense why they're only giving her that one plot because obviously this whole beef between her and Sam Levinson, I don't know. Let me know what you all thought about that scene between the two, and do you want Kat to just address the Ethan situation next week? Let's talk about that in the comments. Nate is here to crash. He's not here to crash the party. They knew that he was coming, and Cassie couldn't wait for him to get there as she's axing you know, their friend, if he's arriving, well, he is here and uh, he is, <laughs> could care less as Cassie is at the door as he just kind of pretends like they don't have a thing. And again, we know that that's eating at Cassie as she is just taking it down this episode with the drinks. But we see Nate gifts, you know, Maddie a necklace for her birthday and Cassie's just watching, just continue to drink. And her mom's like, are you okay, babe? Like, Susie, can you get your daughter? Can you make her drink some water, some tea, some coffee? Yeah, like, she should not be drinking, Susie Howard. But she she is nonetheless letting her drink. She's taking him down, taking him down. She goes to the bathroom and she sees a nice little outfit and it is time for an outfit wardrobe change. She puts on this very revealing outfit and everyone's got her attention now, especially Nate. We know how much she values his attention. But back to, let's cut back to, to Cal, who's at, like I said, this point in the episode, Cal's running wild. He's drunk as a skunk. He's on the streets he has his Jeep that we met and we saw that last week. And I talked about my dislike of last week's cow intro. I just felt like his intro didn't give me a much of an understanding of who he is in the present timeline regarding sex tapes, sleeping with underage teenagers. That that flashback didn't give me any of that last week. I know a lot of people are talking about, oh, it gives me context of why he is. I didn't get that. But I I feel like, okay, now last week is making more sense in this. I just feel like the placement was a little bit off. But now, okay, we get the Jeep. He's now drunk. He wants to channel who he really is as a person, which was his whole thing through this episode as he's cruising the streets, drunk off his ass. I'm thinking to myself, is he going to pay a visit to Derek? Does he know where Derek is? Which we don't 
get Derek in this episode. Technically, he makes an appearance as his younger self, but that's what I was thinking he was going on the road to. But we see that he drives down to the bar that him and Derek first hooked up at and kissed at. He's kissing the chair. He talks to this this man and this guy. He goes over to the jukebox, plays a song, and we intercut that between him drinking and dancing with the guy who he sees as Derek and says, I didn't think I'll find you again. Cut that with Cassie at the party, drinking her ass off and just dancing around. And and again, I applaud that moment with with what we got with Cal in this episode. I just feel like it would have been better placed in last week's episode because again, I felt like last week's flashback didn't give me context to the current day Cal, but then having this in this week's episode ties back to it. So again, I like the plot. I just wish it was placed in last week's episode or vice versa. Give us what you got with Cal and put it in this episode. But neither here nor there, we get more insight on Cal as we cut to him, again, dancing with a, a random stranger who he sees as Derek. And, you know, I'm thinking to myself, is Derek going to make an appearance? Is he still alive? Is he still out there? I hope that's something to see in the future. Is it me or does Derek resemble a younger version or older version to say, or maybe they're the same age. Um, no, well, no, he's probably younger. Derek looks like Ethan to me. And the reason I say that is because number one, he, he does look like he resembles him, but he also, we, we don't know who Ethan's parents are. Uh, we, we met the mom last week. I don't know if we saw the dad. I might be wrong. I might have to go back and watch that moment, but he, again, I'm just hoping that we see more of Derek. I, I would really like to see that character in the present day. I know some people are speculating that it might be the the the, uh, the chief in town, which I don't think that's the case. I think they even said the chief's name. He like does not look like <laughs> what Derek would be, you know, 20 years later. But I don't know if Ethan, again, I might be wrong. Ethan's dad might have been in that, that scene with Kat last week. I might be wrong, but he looks a lot like Ethan to me. But let's move on. Rue, Elliot, and Jules, they're on their way to play another game of Truth or Dare. They're going to steal some liquor. They're drunk. They're drinking. You know, again, Elliot's telling Rue at this point because they, they they went into the liquor store. They stole the liquor. The guy busts their window. He's like, Rue. And obviously, he doesn't want Jules to know that uh, he's taking the, uh, the drugs. Rue is. You shouldn't be mixing the two. And Rue, at this point, she's so far gone. She doesn't care what anyone has to say. She's ready to get high, high, high. And we're going to get to that moment when she gets to her her church spiritual moment. But Rue and Elliot, she's like, you know, and this is a big moment. The truth start to come out when you're drunk, right? <laughs> we see, we, we get that with Cal. We get that with Cassie a little bit. I thought Cassie was going to, we'll, we'll get to her. But Rue tells Jules, as Jules like, you shouldn't be drinking because obviously she knows she's an addict. You know, it's not it's not drugs, but it's alcohol, another form of, of vice that, you know, go down that path. But she's like, you know what, Rue, Rue says to Jules, shut up. I don't like you. I don't want to get into this fight right now. Drop me off at home. And I think at that moment, Jules is just like, I think they need to break up next week, if I'm being honest with you all, because why continue this relationship that doesn't seem to be working for either one of them at this point? They're not giving each other what they need to a certain extent, but we see Elliot does drop Rue off at her home. I thought she was going to walk in someone's random house, but she's sober enough to know her home is. She walks to her room, takes some more drugs, and, and we'll get to her moment of her being on the drugs, but mind you, this is 30 minutes into the episode. I'm thinking, oh, this is about to wrap up soon. And I kind of clicked, accidentally clicked the audio button and I see that there's 35 more minutes. I'm like, oh, we got a lot more to cover. So let's get into the second half of this midway point of the season finale or the midway point of the mid-season finale, I should say. We got Nate getting into the hot tub. We got Rue taking more of Lori's drugs. But let's go back to Jules. She's at Elliot House. They're alone. She wants to take a shower. We know what that was going to lead to, which we'll get into in a second. But let's go to Cassie, who, again, is drinking and making bad decisions and maybe is going to speak her truth in this hot tub. She's uh, the, the acting, the funny comedic beats in this moment. She, like, accidentally stumbles onto Nate as Nate's like, hey, okay, and yeah, you're good. Looks at, you know, Maddie to make sure there's no uh, issues there. And, and again, the, the, the scene was just played so beautifully. Maddie has this moment. She's like, you know, we're not back together. And then and then Cass like, oh, really? And immediately Nate's like, yeah, no, 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 we're not back together. And leave it to Maddie to play on the tone of how he said that. And they have this back and forth. They are, I mean, my man was teamed up. I, uh, Nate, <laughs> hey, as, as a person that's been teamed up before, I'm like, damn, bro, you need to get out of there ASAP. But Kat gets into the mix like, oh, you don't think I can make my own decisions? Maddie's calling him this, that, and the third. And she starts to go over 
all and and notices Nate has never been more afraid <laughs> in his life besides maybe moments with his dad but his eyes in this moment when Maddie's reciting all the promises you know I want you to move in with me when I go to college I love you I can't imagine my life without you I want to marry you and the key word that had the throwing up coming is I want to have kids with you as we see Cassie proceeds to throw up which Maddie like like gagging, I almost gag. I don't like when people throw up in movies and show, let alone in real life. But she throws up and she's just like, I'm sorry, I ruined everything. And I thought she was at that moment. I thought she was going to say, I ruined it. I'm your best friend. And I slept with Nate. But she didn't. She kept her composure. But speaking of composure, Susie's ass, like, where you been at this whole time, Susie? Your daughter's drinking her ass off. So that moment was funny when Susie was trying to get her out of the hot tub. And she's like, help me, get out. Again, the comedic beats in this show was very funny. Money. But I want to know in the in the comments now, wh- who are you feeling more uncomfortable with so far in this episode? Was it the three-way situation with Rue, Elliot, and Jules? Or was it this situation in the hot tub with Cassie maybe spilling the beans with, you know, what she got going on with Nate? But she she spilled something. It was a throw-up, but it wasn't the truth that we was looking for. Which moment had you more uncomfortable? Let me know in the comments. Again, shout out to Sydney Sweeney as Cassie. She is messy, messy, messy. We've never seen her more messier than we've seen her in this episode. And she is playing the character. I, I feel... I feel bad for her, but man, she was messy as hell in this episode. But let's speak of the messy. Let's go back to Cal, who at this point, he's he realizes that's not Derek. He pushes the guy away. He's like, oh, you want to wrestle? He wants to wrestle everyone in the bar. They inevitably kick him out of the bar. We hear him say, it's been 20 years, 25 years. You can't do this to me. All the memories I have here. And I hate to say it because I'm not a Cal fan. I'm not. I'm a fan of the actor. I think he's doing a fantastic job of portraying this this terrible person. <sighs> it hurts me to say this, but I I, I kind of felt bad for Cal because I felt like when he was saying that at the moment, you know, you can't do this to me. You're kicking me out. I felt like it was him saying, "You're." I want to be who I want to be. I want to be with men. I want to be with women. I want to be who I am. And you're kicking me out. Like he's showing it in the wrong way because he's drunk and belligerent and he's dancing with people, wrestling people. I get that. But I think it's him subconsciously saying like, don't do this to me. I just want to be one of you all. I want to be myself around you all. So I kind of feel bad for him. Ah, I feel like I'm going to throw up saying that. But (laughs) at that moment, I feel bad for him. But it's at this point, we got to talk about Fez, who's just been, like I said, kind of, since episode one, you know, that fantastic opening, the, the ass whooping of all the ass whoopings. He's been in the season, clearly. He had a great moment last week. He had a great moment in episode two. But I feel like the, it's, the show is still kind of playing around with what's Fez going to do this season. Well, we get a bit of hint of that. And I don't know if you all remember this. I'm going to play it on the screen right now. Read the body. That could be a plot to look forward to because I would imagine there's going to be people looking for Mouse. If- so I said it then that someone out there is going to be looking for Mouse because it didn't make it. I mean, of course, someone he's this, you know, kind of a middleman drug dealer. Someone out there was going to be looking for him. And it's his baby mama. I wonder who that's going to be. And we all know. You know, uh, whoever's baby mom is, it's going to probably be a character that's going to shake some shit up. And I can't wait to see who that character is. And, and, and we'll talk about Fez and his moment at the end here. But let's go back to Jules and Elliot. Jules Mealy is ready for the action. She's kissing him, making out with him. He stops things. He says, I got something to tell you. And he lets it all out. He spills the bean. This episode should have been called Truth. Truth or Dare. It should have been the name of this episode because he's speaking his truth. He's not high. He's not drunk. He might be a little buzzed because they had a couple. I don't know if he's drunk or not. But either way, over there, he speaks his truth. He tells Jules everything. And at this point, she walks away. She comes back a little bit later, but she walks away at this point. But we go back to Rue, who's ready for church. And we see Elliot and Jules is in the crowd. We see a Labyrinth, who is fantastic. The soundtrack of the show is fire. He makes his, I think, his first live action, or live action, (laughs) his first time in the show, thing in the Rue. And this was such a beautiful moment. This was a fantastic moment for Rue and such a fantastic moment of the show. She's apologizing to her dad. She failed her dad, you know, and, and, and having that moment with him and she misses him. I felt so heartbroken at that moment. And it's so interesting that she's having this spiritual uh, moment because we all know from Rue's special with Ali, she's not a religious person. She, some might even go as far as say she hates, you know, religion. She hates God because of him taking her, taking her dad away from her. So I found it very interesting how she went to church in her mind, how she went to the spiritual moment in her mind, how she went to her dad and her mind. Very interesting moment. Very sad moment, if I'm being honest with you all. I kind of got a little emotional. I'm not going to lie, but a fantastic moment. 
followed by another fantastic moment and maybe the best moment of the episode. And this is coming from a non-Cow fan, I remind you. But Cow, he's back home doing from all my Succession fans out there. He's doing his best impression of Logan Roy, pissing all over the floor, all over the foyer. And he tells his wife he's very lonely. In comes Aaron, in comes Nate. The whole family is about to hear something they might not want to hear. Maybe they knew about it. At least Nate knew. I don't know if his wife knows. But let's get into this moment here, which I think is the highlight of this episode. He goes into being 100% of who he is. He is a man who sleeps with men. He is a man that sleeps with women. And he goes into sleeping with, uh, you know, all the women he has. And, and Aaron's face, you know, the son, the oldest son, is like, Dad, why are you saying this? You're drunk. And, and we see my, which I don't know. I think, did his wife know? This is a question because it seemed like a lot of the truth he was saying she was not. Obviously, Nate, we know Nate already knows the truth of it, but I wonder if his wife knew. And he actually talks about her being a wild, wild cat back in her day, which I like there, there. But what I like what Cal was saying in this moment is the double standard, right? When when Aaron's like, uh, you know, when he found out that he, when he says, I slept with so many men and whatnot. And Aaron's like, why are you saying that? Why are you sleeping with guys? And then Kyle calls it out, well, if I would have came home drunk like I am now, I said I went to a strip club, had sex with a bunch of women with some nice, you know, boobs and nice ass, you would have been like, dad, don't say that in front of mom. But now that I'm saying I'm sleeping with, with men, it's a whole new ball game. And I hate that it's Kyle saying this, but he's so true. The double standard, right, of, of being yourself, sex reality, how we view men. And he even goes into how he, how society, how this family in particular has shunned him of being emotional, right? And again, this is just... You know, the norm, men don't have emotions, don't cry, don't, you know, act a certain way. And and again, as Cal's saying it, and I hate it that it's him, but I really do appreciate what he was saying. And that's the best moment I've ever had with the character. And I thought the way it was portrayed by all of the scenes going on, he even tells Nate that out of his double standard, his double life, his double secret life, he's not more, he's more ashamed of who Nate is and him giving birth to Nate. I'm like, God damn, he is lighting it up this episode. And again... I'm not a fan of Cal, but I really enjoyed that moment talking about family secrets. He calls out his wife having this little flirting session on Facebook. He calls out his son, Aaron, who has the most (laughs) interesting porn history on his computer. And we go to Nate. I don't know who you are, Nate. I don't know what your secrets you have, but I do know I'm sorry for getting you into my shit and having you be raised the way you were. Uh, and then he wraps up with saying, you know, speaking of you two piss heads, go clean up my piss. I'm out. I'm out this thing as he takes the family picture. I would have loved just a little, little cherry on top. If there was someone in the car with him, we didn't see the person's face, but before he went in the house, I would have loved if he said, hey, I got some business to take care of. I'll be right back. And then you know, maybe it would have been Derek. I don't know, but neither here nor there. That was a really great scene for a character I'm not a big fan of, but I thought Cal, he really spoke his truth. And I had a good time at that moment. Let me know what you all thought of that scene. But as we wrap up this episode and this long as review, which by the way, I appreciate you all, we end with Fez praying in a really beautiful shot, but I think he's praying it's the storm before the calm before the storm, I'd say, because there's a storm coming. Whoever that baby mom is, she's going to be coming. She's asking questions already with Faye's boyfriend. Uh, she's coming, and I can't wait to see what comes of that. I, I pray for you, Fez, because you're my boy. I hope nothing bad happens to you, but uh, we'll see what comes of that. But we end with these different pictures of, of, of a picture with Rue and Jules and a, different cuts of them saying, I love you. We see, you know, Elliot and Jules, it looks like they did do the deed, that they did sleep together, even though he told her the truth. And I guess she still wanted emotionally. That's how she reacts sexually. She wanted to have sex with him. Again, we'll see what comes of that relationship. We see, obviously, Elliot is still in the church of Jules, or Rue, I should say, which I think that alludes to maybe next week getting more of the backstory of Elliot. I really hope so. We see Lexi is still preparing her pay, her play, which I cannot wait to see that play. We see Ethan and Elliot in the, uh, or I should say Ethan and Kat in their car. She's silent, I think inevitably. Please let it be next week so she tells him the truth cassie being surrounded by flowers and we hear since before we ever existed i love you what a really interesting episode there again just overall but also in this episode i don't like what cat's doing so far i want her to have more i hope those rumors aren't true but it seems like it's more and more true but i i don't like what they're doing with the character so far 
I'm not a Nate fan, but it feels like Nate's just being, he's just reactionary. Everything in this episode is just him, Maddie, Cass. Him, Maddie, Cass. I, I wonder what they're going to do with him this season. What is his, what is he doing so far this season besides just being, you know, a parasite to these two women? Same goes with Jules. Again, where are we going with Jules now in this relationship? Cheating on Rue again with Elliot. And again, what is going to come of Elliot? What are we going to get with Rue? How is she going to get out of this deal with Lori? How is she going to get out of this drug cycle? Can we get more of her sister, more of her mom? mom's relationship. So there are moments that I do feel like the show is kind of four episodes into season two doesn't have a more, it doesn't have a narrow, like this is where we're headed. I kind of feel like the show's kind of just, I love the show. Don't get me wrong, but I feel like the show doesn't have like a target quite yet versus four episodes into season one. Uh, so let me know your thoughts on that. We're going to talk about that more tonight. Again, link in the description for our live stream discussion, myself and two very special guests. Can't wait to talk to them about this episode and talk to you all. So very interesting episode. Let me know your thoughts about it. I enjoyed it, but I still in the back of my mind, it's like, where are we going with things? Let's talk about it in the comments, pros, cons, thoughts, theories, and everything in between. If you stuck around to this point in the video, I appreciate you all. Before you leave, make sure to like, share, comment, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell. We're almost 20,000 subscribers, and I appreciate every single one of you all. Again, we're live right now talking about this episode. Click the link in the description. Hope you're staying safe. Hope you enjoyed this review. Subscribe to my channel. Check out my other content, and we'll catch you on the next next video.